Next up, let's take a look at the group by function, which is available in Microsoft Excel 365 as a way to aggregate structured data. To help walk through this example, we've got a small table here of loans data, which details the type of loan product that was issued to a specific customer, when it was issued, what the credit limit is on that, and what the current balance is. So suppose we want to take a grouped total by product here. So we can use the group by function. We'll click and select the products that we have available. Then the second argument, we click the column that we want to group or aggregate. And finally, the third argument, we have to describe the type of aggregation we want to do if we come across more than one value for that field. So here we've got those four values, and we want to take a sum in this case of those four. And that returns an aggregated table with a sum of each group. Now, this is a dynamic array, so it spills out from that first cell across the table. And so we have to make sure there's nothing in the way of that spilling array. Now, when we actually look at the formula here in the group by, if we expand that, we can see we're just referring to cell ranges, which aren't particularly helpful. So there's one trick we can do there is to click on the table, use our control T shortcut and actually format this as a table. We can give the table a name like loans data, which then means that when we rewrite the group by formula and click on those column headers with that black arrow, we actually see more meaningful names in the formula. So we can see, okay, group by product, fine. Show me the aggregated balance. And when presented with multiple values, create that sum. So we get the same result, but we have a more auditable formula, which shows very clearly the link to the table. Now, one cool thing we can do with this formula is instead of returning a single aggregated column as the result, we can actually combine multiple columns. So here I've taken for each row the credit limit, deducted the balance, and then got the sum of each, which effectively gives me the sum of all remaining credit limits across those products. And so there's all sorts of clever ways that you can use this function to aggregate and simplify your data without resorting to a pivot table. The neat thing about using a dynamic array formula to do this is that you don't have to rely on a pivot table or updating that table to see the new results when you add or subtract entries from your structured data table. The formulas are flexible. They allow you to build in different calculations, different subtotals, and different ways of aggregating the data. And so they represent yet another way that Microsoft is bringing these sort of productivity formulas in to help you transform your data on the fly.